Well, let's just get to football. So, um, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> we won yesterday, by the way. Yeah, I, I know, know there's a lot of lamenting going on, but we did win. It is, a, by the way, a football game no, against a team that everyone seemed to think we were going to lose against. Yeah, no, I, look, I mean, it, it was. L- let me let me just start with this. I can't be the only one. I might be the only one to think this, but I'm probably not the only one where once you think about it, you realize. I think we needed a brain transplant after that game to process everything that had gone on. I mean, that was like getting a concussion and trying to wake up afterwards and figure out what happened and what does it mean? I think I can boil it down. All right, boil it down. Go ahead. It takes a while. G- give me a sec to get Go to the bottom of the the pot okay. that we're boiling in here. Okay. All right, so after yesterday, we need to notice that Atlanta, the Falcons team that we struggled against and lost to mm-hmm. Monday night, they actually are kind of good. They they did well against the Chiefs last competitive, night. Competitive, and the yeah. Chiefs reminded us that they need work, too. Andy Reid needs work, too. His team needs work. But they won, and it was close. And, you know... We also won. Let's not lose sight of that fact. And we're gaining confidence, and we're grinding in games, and our defense is winning for us, and our run game is winning for us. And thank God, an awesome tight end in Dallas Goddard is winning for us. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. They finally pre-planned in the first 15, Dallas Goddard, Dallas Goddard, Dallas Goddard. We're going to have to do that every week because he is that good. Old school football. That's what we've been begging for. That's what we got. Our defense won us that game. Our running game won us that game. Our old school tight end won us that game. We won, and we have a template for winning. Leaning into Jalen and Saquon and the run game, and our offensive excellence just requires carries. Our defensive excellence requires want to and and inspiration, and Vic Fangio getting medieval with the guys during the week. Hey, that's not tough enough. You could see the difference. It was just guys wanted it. So great to see. Great to see that that's a solvable situation. And it, my issue is it doesn't feel like we're getting the best version of our head coach. And it came awfully close to being ugly yesterday. I, I guess everyone's still working out exactly what our head coach is. Um I'm sort of fed up with wondering that. I I wonder if the players are fed up with wondering that. It bothers me that Nick Sirianni is the head coach of a team that fails at situational football, and this goes back the whole way to when he first started and he was calling plays for us. And I'm saying, why aren't we doing two-minute at the end of halves? Why don't we try to score every single point we possibly can? Squeeze every bit of juice out of that orange. I never agreed with you back then. It didn't make any sense to me because every offense I've ever been on, it matters to those offenses because that's practice. Those are reps you can get. Those will make you better the next game. I I just don't think... It bothers me Nick was the head coach of a team that was bad at situational football. And now we're pulling back from Nick, and we know the team, the organization's pulling back a little bit, but we've never maximized the the, the end of halves. You know, it wasn't Peyton Manning esque in the way he would like an offense would fastidiously attack, attack, attack relentlessly. We would hand it off at the end of halves, you know, okay, we relent. Uh that's across offensive coordinators, that problem that I have. So it falls to the head coach and the quarterback. The, that's that's where the problem. You know, I can isolate it for from my perspective. It feels like Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, they're both responsible. We don't know how they both need to be better. We'll probably never know if Nick once upon a time made it like dialed it back and made it simple for Jalen's sake because Jalen was new at the offense and then things didn't progress the way. They should have. I don't know. Nick has been capable of making it close against teams that have no business being on the field with our roster. That's the way I feel. Like Nick Sirianni, I'm not exactly sure everything that goes into and composes the role, but I know it feels like you know we're we're getting a lesser version of him because I I've been told we're getting a lesser version, a dialed back version. It doesn't seem like. That's helping. It doesn't seem like that's making us a better team. 
And I, I wonder, you know, week five, I thought when I first saw the, the schedule and when it came out, week five, that's a weird time for a bye. That's a, that's a time for a self-scout and some reshuffling, reexamination. How are they going to reshuffle things after that early bye well, to probably remove more power from Nick Sirianni? That's what I would expect. No, I, that's well, what I, don't, I would well, I don't expect suspect. that. So, right, After so, decisions like he made yesterday, suspect decisions well, John, that John, nearly cost us that game. To be fair, again. there's there's only one way, one more way to remove power from him, and that's a fire. Just to you know, all right, so all right, all all of this on the table at two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. Let me start with this, and John, I agree with most of what you said, not all, but most. Let me start with this: the Eagles won yesterday in spite of Nick Sirianni. Yes. Period, end of sentence, in spite of him. Now, I do give him credit. I'll say this. They, they show a resiliency in a fight that I do believe comes in part from him. But the bad of Nick Sirianni yesterday far outweighed the good. His decisions on fourth down, kicking, punting, freaking disgraceful. Disgraceful. And I know there were a lot of people yesterday, and I know, I mean, like thousands, maybe millions Literally, maybe millions calling for his job during the game. Okay, during the game. I get it, guys. So that is totally on the table here at 215 592 94 94. Because even though the Eagles have some great parts of their team and some not good parts of their team, the reality is this should be a playoff team. And you've got to figure out whether you want Nick Sirianni to be the head coach. I mean, to me, it's laughable. Bill Belichick is available. If the Eagles had coaching. lost that game yesterday. Would the would it be that far fetched that people that the organization would be considering a move? So I'll say if this: if we'd lost that I, game, I understand. I I don't think. Let me put it this way: I don't think the Eagles would have done it, but it, it, the thought might have gone through Laurie and Howie's mind. I think so. I mean, it's it's possible. Now, let me put it this way: I am not at the point this year to fire Nick Sirianni. I want to state that right on the record right now. I just think at this point, it's, it would do probably more harm than good. But he's got to get his act together as it relates to these decisions in the game. He's gone totally out of control with it. And frankly, I thought he had little feel for the game yesterday. See, here's the thing. There's what a chart says, right, when you're playing a a team that's, let's call it average. Then there's what the chart should say against a good team. There's a chart that says what against a bad team. There's a chart whether your team's good. There's a chart whether your team's bad. Let me put it this way. There should be. There shouldn't be just one chart. There should be... There should be a coach at the end of the day that can assess where is my sure. team within this game against that team Doug under, Peterson th- under goes these in, circumstances. Doug Peterson goes into the Super Bowl against the Patriots knowing he has Points. to challenge the Patriots. That's right. He has to be ultimately aggressive That's right. at every turn. That's a great example, John. So, so look, again, I give Sirianni credit for the fight the team shows because I do think part of that comes from him. I really do. But I, also, I do, too. Yeah, I, I really believe that. Yes. But I also know, I mean, his decisions were an abomination yesterday. Now, now let's get to Jalen. And it wasn't just here. Oh, that's that decision there, that decision. It was, it was a, lot. a litany of was decisions. A, lot. Yeah. You, it, yeah. a list. I know. All right, let's get to Jalen. So here's the thing about Jalen Hurts that I think is, is, is putting a lot of people's brain in a blender. We're really not used to here with the Eagles, and I'm going back about 30 or more years. We're really not used with the Eagles to having an average or slightly above average quarterback. We have, for the most part, generally speaking, either had someone like really good or he really stinks. And so it's really easy to assess what the guy is. Now, Donovan obviously was really good but had his flaws, and we had consternation about that, but that was about trying to win NFC Championship games, get to a Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl, and have glory. For the most part, we've had really good or really bad. Hertz is not really good, nor is he really bad. I mean, when you really net it out, when you really watch football across the league, he, he's probably slightly above average. And, and so what this is doing but is— But you can say Joe Burrow has no, played slightly above no, but, average but, but, this but, season. No, no, hold on, I, if you're hold just on. basing it on three games— No, no, I'm not. And, uh, I'm, no, I'm not. Hold on a second. No, I'm not. So it's confusing the hell out of people. Because you see parts of it, and you say, get this guy off my team. And then you see other that's parts of it. That's the first half. That's the first half. And, and then, then you, the second half, I know. Jalen Hurts I agree. is healed 
It does not it does not look like he's lagging from the injuries of the last couple years. He that, played much better as, you know, the, as the game went on. About. Yeah, no, look, he sprightlier, he, I, making look, better decisions, but he is not a turnover maker. He no, this season has been a turnover maker. Well, so he has been turnover prone with six turnovers this season. That yeah. is uncharacteristic look, of Jalen Hurts. That. Is not going to continue. Well, I don't think that's accurate any longer. I don't. I don't think you can say it's, it's not a turnover maker. Hold any on. Longer. What we've seen this year in three games mm-hmm. is that, what you're going to base that opinion on. Plus last year. Base your opinion plus, plus, on. Plus. Okay, last year. Last year. Last year was the worst we've seen him. Okay, so and plus I, last year. I'm saying this year should not be a continuation of that. But it has been. This, so it has but been, it has and been. that should that is concerning. Yeah. I'm saying that can be a bump. That's just a new offense, and I hope it can well, be taken look, care of. All right, so all, all of this on the table at 215-592-9494. Let, let me say the sub-headline, because I do think the two main things, because so go they in many ways are so going to go the franchise, the, 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 the coach and the quarterback, okay? And, and, and ultimately, Lurie and Howie need to make decisions on how long they want to ride with either, okay? And I'm not saying I'm off of either right now. I'm just saying, obviously, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad on both. The bottom line is the Eagles won yesterday primarily because of four things. Their defense, their offensive line, Saquon Barkley, and Dallas Goddard. That's why they won the game. Primarily. Primarily why they won the game. So they're 2-1. and one. Look, the reality is they, they should make the playoffs in a weak NFC East. They're pretty fortunate to be in a, what appears to be a weak, a weak division. And again, they could have been 3-0. and oh. They could have been 0-3. Oh to this point, it nets out 2-1. and one. How do I feel? Frankly, in a word... There's no one word. I'm frustrated. I'm confused. I'm happy that they won, but I'm still trying to figure out where my brain sits on all of it. Two one five five nine two ninety. I'm bothered, I'm, well, I'm bothered I'm happy, too. Happy, but bothered yeah, by no, a win. I think that's a. And, and also, I'll say this: after last year, I wasn't in the mood for more of these wins where it's like, all right, my yeah. team won, but. Yeah. So it's like here's here's what we're going to get a lot this year. I'm just telling you, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to get a lot of bad losses and you're going to get a lot of dirty wins. It's what they are. Your reaction, Joe to Cameron, John Ritchie on 94 WIP.